Okay. So we're looking back at this yellow function. We're just writing in a way that we can do the derivative. We've done the derivative so far. A little bit of simplification. Okay. Here, can you see that the 2 and the 2 would cancel out? Okay. So we would be left with just a negative x on the top. Okay. This 16 minus x squared to the 1 half could be moved down to the bottom of the equation, and it could be written as a square root, right? As 16 minus x squared. What I want you to notice when we did this is that what's on the bottom is the same as y in what we started with. Can you see that what's on the bottom of my fraction is the same as the original y? So I could technically write this as negative x over y, because that's what it's equal to begin with. Now, if we look at what we found with our implicit differentiation, okay, we got negative 2x over 2y. You can see that you could have simplified the 2s and got negative x over y. And that's what we found in this case when we did solve for y, get it by itself, and then do implicit differentiation. If we would have done the green equation, we would have found the same relationship. There would have been an extra negative involved because we started with an extra negative, but then that would have still been accounted for with the y on the bottom. Does that help make the implicit differentiation make a little bit more sense, seeing it with an actual equation and, oh, that's where the y comes into, into play? However, solving for this first and then doing this and recognizing where the y is to substitute back, in this case it was possible. We could get y by itself to be able to do that. But in our second equation that we looked at, there is no way that we can get y by itself. Well, no nice way, no quick way. And yet, we can say this is what you would notice if you did, and we're able to get the derivative. 